Watch what it says. Uh, it, it says in verse 25 of, of, of Acts uh, chapter 27. Wherefore, sirs, be. Say what? Yeah. Be of good cheer. For I believe God. Woo. Thank you. Huh. Woo. I love that right there. Yeah. Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. Be of good cheer. Yeah. Yeah. Why? You know something, Pastor? I know I know someone. Come on. Come on. You, you know about something? No, I know about someone. I know someone that'll never leave you. That'll never forsake you. So look at somebody and say, I, I know you're in a storm, but be of good cheer. Watch this. The word cheer there means courage. I thought courage came out of strength. Are you here? I thought courage came out of strength. Courage has nothing to do with physical strength. Courage is a state of mind that convinces the individual or the object that it can and will stand up to extreme dangerous measures against it. We have two dogs at our house. One's big and the other one's little. And there's... there's there's a time when the big dog starts messing with the little dog. And you know that the big dog, with one bite, could just take that little dog we got and sling him to Tampa from Orlando. I mean, that, you just, you know that, you know, Kendall and I sit there and go, if, if this dog ever decided, you know, just, just to grab this little dog, he could, you know, she could just tear him apart. Right. But something rises up right. in that little dog. Right. And it, it blows my mind. Because the little dog, the big dog don't want the little dog to get to us. Because the big dog's jealous. Uh -huh. So the big dog keeps walking in front of the little dog and pushing the little dog away. Oh. Are y'all here? Yeah. And we just sit there and start laughing. And every now and then, I gotta break up a fight. But the fight ain't started by the big dog. Every now and then the little dog has had enough. You've blocked me from my love enough. You've brought, blocked me from my owner enough. Hey, I was here before you were here. Hello, somebody? And the little dog will just rise up and he's got like four teeth, but he shows all four of them. And he's like, Rah! and that big dog starts backing up and, and just wagging and backing up. And, and, and the other day it happened and the spirit of the Lord rose up in me and said, sometimes it looks like your obstacle, your enemy and your attacker is bigger than you are. But let courage come up in your spirit. And when it's time, you ain't got to bark, but give me a praise. You don't have to bark, but give me a shout. You don't have to bark, but rise up and let the devil know you own my territory. You're trespassing and you're getting between me and my answer. Come on, high five somebody and tell them, say, it's still intact. I gotta hurry, I only got five minutes. I'm gonna give somebody a prescription while you're in the storm. You ready? Say, preach meteorologist. All right, I will. I can't take my time, but I'll preach. Watch this, you ready? Look at verse 40. I'm skipping, I'm, I'm gonna skip some stuff. Look at verse 40. And when, here we go. If you're writing something down, watch this. And when they took up the anchor. Huh. Just write down number one. Pull up your anchor. Watch, watch. An anchor, Jim, we're in Florida. When you're on a boat, an anchor tells you this is where you want to stay. Paul said we're in a storm. And Paul said it's time to take up the anchor. 
Because I ain't staying here in this situation. I thought I'd get more help than I ain't staying broke. You can stay broke, but I ain't staying broke. You can stay depressed, but I'm pulling up my anchor. I'm not going to live depressed. Just look at somebody and say, pull your anchor up. There's some women in here that are single, but you're dating somebody you ought not be dating. And you pray, well, maybe if I maybe if I just pray hard enough. No, if he didn't love God before you started dating him, let him go and tell him when you find Jesus, you'll be able to find me. Until then, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I'll see you later. Tell somebody, pull your anchor up. My sister was crying over an old boyfriend, and my mama was visiting. My mama told her, she said, dry your tears. I can't stand you crying over no man. She said, men are like buses. Stay right here. Another one will come by soon. Somebody shout, pull up the anchor. Some folk, you, you know what I'm saying? When I started pastoring, you remember Pastor Brian, you were there. Her name was Amy. Her name was Amy. Every Sunday, she was sick and sick and sick and sick and sick and sick and sick. And I felt like I had to pray for her every daggone Sunday. And finally, I got tired of it. All she wanted was to stay right there in that pity party and get my attention. And so I laid hands on her and said, God, heal her or kill her, but do something to this woman. This heifer needs deliverance. Pull out the anchor. Quit crying over what happened 10 years ago. Get over it. Get over it, your life. I got preachers that call me and say, you know, I had some folk leave my church. I said, good. And he said, what you mean good? I said, if the devil took him, he owes you seven. If God took him, he owes you a hundred for everybody that walks out the back door. And maybe you needed them to leave so God could bring a new, fresh vision to hit your house. I came to prophesy to Port St. Lucie. We ain't staying right here forever. We pulling up the eight. They committed themselves to the sea. I thought committed means committed. I'm, I'm committed. But if you look at it in, in, in your Greek and Hebrew, it don't mean like the word committed like we think, like I'm sold out. It means to allow. Say what? Look here. To a, a lie. To, to watch. To release control. Because see, watch this, y'all. Watch this, y'all. Jesus won't drive your boat as long as your hands are on the steering wheel. He'll just go find a pillow and go to sleep. And when it gets bad enough, you'll wake him up. Come on, somebody. You'll go down in the bottom and say, hey, 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 master. If I could have questioned the disciples, I'd have said, why were you driving in the first place when Jesus is on the boat? Paul said, we, we released ourselves. How do you do that? When you know that God is really in control. And the Bible says, that Paul said, pull up the anchor. Mm -hmm. Number two, he said, get out of control. Let go of it. Give it to God. Mm -hmm. Wait, y'all still looking at me kind of funny. Uh, I was reading this and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, don't you remember what your daddy used to do? When I'd walk around the church when I was a little boy, my daddy would tell me stories about certain thing, things and people at church. He would say, he would say, there used to be an old lady sit right here. You ever had that happen to young man? There used to be an old lady sit right here, Clint. She died uh, years and years and years ago. But let me tell you what she used to do. And he'd tell me about it. And so I, 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 I remember about that old lady. And then when they would be talking, I'd say, oh, yeah, that's that old lady. Mm -hmm. 
that used to sit right there. And then he'd tell me about an old man that used to be in church. He sat all the way in the back. He said, I don't care if there was only 20 of us in there. He was in the last chair, in the last pew in the back. And he'd tell me stories about people. And so my mind just went to Paul. Can you imagine when Paul got saved? You know when you first get saved, you just want all of Jesus. Am I by myself? It ain't to you about 10, 15 years in the kingdom where, you know, we can't be, most of them are useless. Where they don't want to do nothing, they don't want to be involved, they're not hungry, they don't come to no revival nights. But when you first get saved, you want to know everything. And, and I can see Paul sitting around. And I, I asked Paul uh, in an imaginary conversation I had with Paul today before I came to preach to you. Paul, why would you pull the anchor up? And why would you surrender and allow the wind to just do whatever you wanted it to do? And Paul said, because I remember a story somebody told me. I wasn't there. But they told me about it. That Jesus woke up from the bottom of a boat that was in a storm. And Jesus stepped out on the front of that boat and said, peace. If he can talk to the wind, in the book of Luke, he can talk to the wind in the book of Acts. Watch this, watch this. I'm, I'm closing. Say, he pulled up the anchor. See, some of y'all ain't going to remember this. But somebody in a storm will. He went, he got out of control. And then look at the third thing he did. Watch this, watch this. He, he loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind. See, what was, what was fighting against me, I'm going to make it work for me because I don't want to be in this ocean with the waves tossed I want to go toward the shore so I'll let trouble y'all ain't saying nothing I, I'll let trouble watch this I'll let trouble be my thrust but I, let me say it to the left side over here I'll let trouble thrust me that's why watch this y'all when Jesus was in the wilderness, Jesus didn't tell the devil to leave. Jesus looked at Satan and just told him to get behind him. Because he didn't need, he, didn't, he wasn't worried about the problem. He just needed a push. I came to preach to somebody in this section. The devil's about to push you into your destiny. Push you into your purpose. Push you back into your life. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm here to tell you, pull out the anchor, get out of control, cut off the rope, pull out the sail, and let the wind push you. Not too long ago, I went to a chiropractor. And while I was there, I don't know if you've ever been to a chiropractor, I wanted to come up off that table and kill him. I was on my belly and he was, he was pushing and he was cracking. I felt like I was going to break in two. Then when I thought he was done, he turned me on my side and took my leg. I'm 54. Tried to put it up to my chin or something. Grab one leg like this my other arm like that and was, went the opposite direction. I said, hey, 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 these things are supposed to go in the same direction. And if you do the other side, I'm going to beat the hell out of you next time you try to kill me like that. You ain't trying. He said, I'm not trying to hurt you. But he said, it's going to take some hurt if you want some healing. And I said, well, then what in the world are you trying to do? I'm just trying to get you back in life. 